Yeah, uh, doing the Lord's work, Father. Keep it up. The advice you give us is worth more than money. It's worth my weight in gold. It's such a pleasure to speak to you because I think that you're you're the Dalai Lama of relationships. I'm not paying anybody's student loans off. I'm not paying anybody's car payments. Damn straight, Tom. Preach it. As soon as they get comfortable and they've got your balls, it's over, man. You might as well make huevos rancheros every Sunday for the whole block. The reason I called is that I just heard what happened to Paul McCartney. Very well deserved. Do you think she deserves the money, or you think he deserves uh, what happened to him because he was stupid and didn't get a prenup? Uh, actually, I don't know if they do air your show out in England, but if they do, and he hasn't been listening, dude, you need to get a way to find Tom like a man. You see, it takes stories like this for guys to understand why getting married is no good for you. And you don't have to have $48.7 million uh, because it, 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 the amount is a lot. Whatever a lot is to you, that's what they'll take. You know what? I would rather be dirt poor, eating out of a garbage can behind some store than putting up with some effing C with a stump <laughs> trying to take my money no matter how little I have. You are dead on when you when you talk about women being dream killers. Because as somebody who uh, I almost bit the bullet, you know, I'm, I've only been listening to your show for about a month. I'm, I used to live in Southern California. I knew of you, but I used to think that you were just this, this big jerk who didn't understand women and just wanted to be miserable. Coming more and more now to see that you're just dead on. Come talk, come talk, come talk tonight. Hello. Yes. Hello. Who's this? This is Naya, her sister. Oh, hi. How old are you? Six. You're six. What is your opinion? I don't like how you talk about women because it's not really nice. And some men can get women that are fat. Yeah, but uh, who would want them? That's what I say. Get some work, wait. All right. So you, no, should, no. you should listen to your dad. He knows what he's talking about. No, he does not. Everybody knows who I am and what I am, including uh, everybody listening right now. And everybody still wants to sleep with you, right? Yes, they do. Well, here's one person that doesn't. I have to say, you're doing a fantastic job, Tom, and two years ago, I was engaged, and my ex-fiance told me to listen to your show, and once I listened to your show, I ended it. I'm like, there is no reason to get married at 20 years old. That's so right. I thank you so much, and I'm so glad, and you have a listener for life. I wanted to make a comment about the uh, when it's appropriate to give a uh, woman a compliment. It's only appropriate to give her a compliment if you could give the same compliment to a man, like... Wow, that's the fastest I've ever seen anybody change a tire or something. Like that. <laughs> you know, it, it has to be a generic situation. If you give them, wow, you look great today, what they heard is, hey, he's buying me a wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> There are some girls, you know, that are pretty immature, you know, like 18 years old. I think I'll call, you know, 22 years old. Uh, immature is okay, as long as they shut up and put their left leg at the 10 and the right leg at the 2. <laughs> yep. Now, how would you say dump that bitch in Chinese? Well, there's no literal translation, of course, but uh, uh, I guess you might say something like, uh, What would that mean, literally? That would be, uh, that's kind of like a word for a slut. So it would be like, uh, take that slut and throw her in the trash. <laughs> throw, throw her out. From a fallout shelter in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, my God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's never kind radio talk program we're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacker or a convicted felon no I am your host write down our telephone number you're going to need it it's 1-800-5-800-TOM 1-800-5-800 Six, six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are 
together again on the radio. It's Good Friday. That's right, Good Friday. <laughs> All right, what is Good Friday again? Something to do with uh, Jesus. Something to do with Jesus. Wait a minute. Easter Sunday is like the it's like the resurrection of Jesus, so that makes Good Friday the day he was nailed to the cross? Maybe. Is that what it is? <laughs> I think so. I wonder how did it get that name Good Friday? What's so good about that? You know, if I was getting nailed to the cross, that would not be a Good Friday. That would be one of the uh Probably be one of the worst Fridays of my life. <laughs> Good Friday. That's right. Well, happy Good Friday to everybody out there. Let me just say this. And I mean this in all sincerity. Uh, ladies, please show your respect for Jesus tonight by going out and getting nailed. And, man, a message for you, too. Remember, it is Good Friday, so be sure to eat fish. Thank you. Oh, yes, here it is on this Good Friday with wide open telephones. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Some of the things we discussed, oh, my God, the Paul McCartney divorce. Gary thinks Heather Mills has a jump on being gold digger of the decade. I think uh, he forgot the other one. Who was the other one? I'm forgetting her name already. The blonde who married the geezer who died at the Hard Rock Casino. Anna Nicole, Anna Nicole Smith. See, I forgot already. I mean, really, what is there to remember her by? She didn't do anything. She didn't have any creative work or anything. For God's sake, she was just a gold digger. So, uh, there you go. I think Adam Nicole Smith was a bigger gold digger, but you could have the Super Bowl of gold diggers between those two. Tell you what. Paul McCartney, $48.7 million. We talked about that this week. We talked about the new governor of New York State, David Patterson. He admitted that he and his wife have had sex with other people other than each other. <laughs> but he says they've worked everything out. We talked about that letter we got. By the way, it's posted on our website, blowmeuptom.com. This is the guy who sent a letter uh, to us via snail mail. The uh, envelope said, best letter you've ever received. And this is the guy who wanted his wife to hear me reading the letter on the air where he was dumping her and revealing he's been banging other broads and she cut him off on their honeymoon. We had a really good show this week with... Uh, Memphis State Representative G.A. Hardaway, he uh, he is uh, sponsoring a bill in the Tennessee legislature that would uh, require mandatory DNA testing before a court could render an order of child support. And I hope you guys all check that out on our website as well. The bill might be a good idea to send a copy of that or send a link to that to uh, your representative and say, why can't we have this in our state? We talked about the uh, new program in L.A. County that's targeting the top 10 deadbeat dads. But uh, no wanted posters uh, for uh, women who deny men uh, visitation rights or kidnap their children and take them to other states. No program like that. We talked about new research that, uh, that found that a 15-year gap is optimum between men and women. In other words... Uh, uh, the optimum age difference a man should be with a woman 15 years his junior. I'm sure a number of you women who are past your expiration date are upset about that. We talked about Britney Spears allegedly upset uh, that uh, she thought her boyfriend was banging around behind her back, so she supposedly sent him uh, about 100 text messages a day. So those are some of the things we did talk about. We can also talk about some of the issues we did not talk about. The latest, for example, on... Former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer, he has now entered therapy for possible sex addiction. <laughs> oh, boy. 
That is, by the way, that is what they do. Okay. That is what they do. You know, when they get caught, when they get in trouble, they head right into rehab, right into therapy. That's what they do. Mm hmm. So there goes Elliot Spitzer. Oh, I'm an addict. <laughs> that is what they do. Uh, you can call in about anything at all. Maybe the phone lines were tied up when you tried to uh, call in. Maybe you were busy. Uh, you can yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you are absolutely fascinating. If you're not, Dino will kick your ass the hell off the telephone. It's that simple. Just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And now, uh, because we know that the uh, 800 number does not work in other countries outside the United States, we've added an international line that you can dial if you're calling from another country. We have listeners listening to us uh, on the Internet, online streams, what have you. If you're calling from another country, the country code for the United States is 1, because we're number 1. Uh, then the, yes, that's right, the area code 323, and then the number 520-6211. That's 1-323-520-6211. So you can get us every which way if you want. Now it's up to you to start dialing. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Why would he trust you? Because I give him what he wants, Tom. I'm good at what I do, if you understand what I mean. I don't want to say it over the radio. Because there's no there's no chrome on your trailer hitch at home? Is that what you're telling us? Um, I think so. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Uh, 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, John. How's your everyone hanging? Hanging right as usual, John. Good, good, no. All right, so you had a little thing yesterday about text messages, and I had to call in. I had a, uh, pretty much every girl I have a rule with, and this one, every morning, before she got dressed, she had to send me three pictures wearing different underwear, and I would tell her which one she would wear for the day. Uh, one day, she only sent me two. I asked her where the other one was. She checked her phone. She had sent it to her ex, and it was this pretty pink thing that just above the soft spot said, rub me for luck. Oh, boy. For days, he was calling her going, you sent that to me on purpose. You know you want me. And it was hilarious to watch because she was so pissed off. She never sent me any more after that. Ah. I stopped talking to her. It was awesome, though. By the way, why is her ex's phone number still in her phone? I don't know. Didn't care. She was just a booty call. <laughs> <laughs> can you take me out with the meow, meow, meow? It seems like... I certainly can, John. Oh yeah, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. It's wide open telephones with John. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Ah, the ratings. <laughs> That's right. Um, earlier this week, you were talking about uh, the SWAT department having a little, I guess, dispute about women not being. Well, it's not a SWAT department; it's the Los Angeles Police Department that has a SWAT unit. Okay. Um, well, my first question is: Does that also make it easier for guys to make it into SWAT, or just is it a separate thing for women? That's not clear, uh, because remember. Uh, they had to dig this information up. Uh, the report was not released to the press, uh, so we don't know yet. But uh, it's a good question. Well, but, uh, I'm a constitutionalist, and what I'm afraid of is that this country is becoming more into a fascist society. That's what I do not want to see happen. Um, and seeing more SWAT, I don't see that as a good idea. Well, uh, it's not more SWAT. It's more of the SWAT team being women. Yeah. Um, 
Oh yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. If it, if they make the test more easier, then that means there'll be more guys on the SWAT team. Um, no, there, there, no. <laughs> there, there's only a finite number of members of the SWAT team. Uh, there's only a set amount that they're allowed to have. Right. By simplifying the test, it would make it more easy for women to be okay. members of the finite number. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I just hope uh, us citizens, us true citizens of America, that we're able to keep our government in check and make sure we don't become a fascist society. I don't think the SWAT team is a problem, frankly. I think the SWAT team has uh, done... Uh, with one glaring error where they killed a little girl, and it was real tragic, um, over all of these years, and I think SWAT's been around for over 35 years, uh, they've just gone in and helped uh, people who are being held hostage and oh, yeah. dealt sure with they... people. I mean, come on. It's a fascist society because we go after people who use big weapons and threaten to blow up buildings or uh, kidnap oh. people. I don't see where the fascism is. I don't see the people with big machine guns in our streets right now, so I don't see... Well, that's because you live in Burbank, you don't live in South Central Los Angeles, or you don't live uh, uh, in Compton, uh, where machine guns are. And by the way, John, I might tell you, you live in Burbank. Uh, I had an experience one time in uh, Studio City, mm -hmm. in the parking lot of Jerry's Famous Deli, where I had just gone bowling next door there. Do you know where I'm talking about? No, I don't. All right, well, it's on Ventura Boulevard, and uh, it's Studio City, okay? We're not talking about the inner city here. We're talking about the San Fernando Valley. Okay. And uh, late at night, uh, a Russian guy was driving wildly like he was drunk or on drugs through the parking lot of Jerry's Deli, uh, aiming a machine gun out the window. I saw it. Mm. So you're living in a dream world if you think that's not out there. Well, I just don't think we need a, a whole SWAT team with M4s. No, I'll tell you what, when the SWAT team goes in, when the SWAT team goes in and shuts down freedom of speech or any other constitutional right, call me back. I don't see any evidence that that's ever happened. Very true. Um, well, there, there are cops uh, who take pictures of protesters who they save in a database. I know this. And... I'm afraid they'd use that in the future. Uh, again, I am more concerned about uh, evidence that police are taking away constitutional rights. And when you have evidence of that, I'm interested. Okay? okay. But it's a small number of cops. Okay. I just I just want us citizens of America to keep, our, keep an open mind and remember the Constitution first before anything. Well, I agree with that. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Joe on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Okay. All right, my question to you is, um, I recently started listening to your show, and at one time I heard you talking about don't ever do a joint account with them to pay bills or whatnot. Uh, can you clear that up for me and let me know more about that? Uh, I certainly can. Uh, if you are living with someone, which you shouldn't be doing anyway, but if you are living, you're not. So what no. would you need a joint checking account for? Proposing, she's proposing that. What for? The idea of possibly living together. And why would you want to do that? I don't. But... All right. So, so it starts with that. Say no to living together. Right. Then you don't need a joint checking account, do you? Definitely not, but I want to know what your stance on that. And, My stance on it is she wants a joint checking account, so you will put the majority of money in, and she will have access to it. <laughs> that's that's the purpose of it. She'll tell you it's cute to see both your names on the checks or to go to the bank and pick out the checks with the kitty cats or the sunsets or the stagecoaches or whatever. But the reality is she wants to start a joint account and move in with you so she doesn't have to pay rent anymore. And knowing that you, like a, a sucker, will put in the majority of the money, which she will have equal ownership and access to. I see. What are we both putting in the same amount as proposed? Why do you need a joint checking? I have no reason for it. All right, that's my it. point. If you don't need one, why get one?
You see, if you insist on doing some stupid thing like moving in with her, which I do not recommend. Right. You want to keep all the utilities in your own name. Why is that? Because if the relationship doesn't work out, you want to be able to turn the utilities off. <laughs> You're laughing. That's hilarious. I've done it. Wow. Because once they move in, it's like the Roach Motel. Remember the commercials for the Roach Motel? Roaches move in, but they can't move out. Right. That's what your apartment's going to be like. Once she moves in, there'll be no getting her out. And if you're not happy or it's not working out, you can't legally lock her out of the apartment anymore. Like you can now. Well, it's a house. I would kick her out, but... Yeah, but guess what? Now, that's even worse. You own a house. Imagine if you own a house and you can't get somebody out. I see. All right. Well, thanks for the clarification. What do you think about that? No, I, I needed to know your opinion. I'm already against it. So you're more like a validation or confirmation of it. Yeah, I mean, there is no need for a joint checking account. You're, you have a checking account. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, very simple. If you don't live together, you don't need to pay bills together. Trust me when I tell you, I don't know her and I don't know you. Let me guarantee without knowing you or her that you make more money than she does. Right? Multiple fold, yeah. Right. And uh, she's got an apartment she's tired of paying for. Isn't that right? <laughs> Something like that. She's almost done with college, so. Is she getting money from you now? No. No? No. She'd like to. And this is so. one way she would. First of all, she moves into your house. Uh-huh. You, you own the house, so uh, is she going to pay you rent? I wouldn't expect so, no. <laughs> yeah, that's my point. You wouldn't expect so. Why not? Kind of awkward, isn't it? Well, again, Joe, that's why you don't want her moving in. <laughs> true, true. You have to think ahead, okay, past this period of lust to when you can't stand being around her anymore. And that day will come. And she tells you she's got no place to live. Where am I going to go? You see, this has happened to me and many people who are listening. We've talked about this with many people. Think ahead to that day when you can't stand her anymore. Can you do that? Yeah. Okay. So you tell her, honey, it isn't working out, so I need you to go. And then she drags her feet about leaving. And so you say, you know, by the way, I had this conversation with two different women in the last five years, six years, seven years, seven years now, it's... Seems like only five years. I had this conversation with two different women. Five months after the original conversation, I say, excuse me, do you remember five months ago we had a conversation? And I told you I couldn't take this anymore and I need you to go. How come you're still here? <laughs> Good deal. And you see, I own my house. And here I was in a position where I can't just change the locks. Do you understand that? Yeah, that's a, that's a definitely good point. Do you really want to take that kind of risk? I do not. Never letting her move in is the best way to prevent that from happening. Sounds like a plan. Let her pay for her own apartment. Yeah, I like the separate space. It feels much better. Of course it does. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to be alone for a night. That's the uh, strength of being alone, right? Well, yeah. Think about this. She only comes over on nights when she wants to have sex. Vice versa. Same thing. But the point is, so every time you see her, it's to have sex, right? Of course. Right. When she moves in, she won't want to have sex every night because she doesn't want to have sex every night now. She actually wants more sex than I do. She, well, that's what she's telling you in her ongoing sales pitch to be your roommate. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you, her sex drive will go down the minute she gets the keys to your place. 
I see. I'm telling you from lifelong experience. Oh, yes, she needs more sex than you do now. But just wait until she gets the keys. Good deal. Thanks for heads up. So you don't want to be having joint. You don't want to do any financial anything with her. No joint checking accounts. No leases. Uh, no electric bills, gas bills, water bills, nothing. No telephones. By the way, how much does she owe in student loans? Uh, not much because um, her parents is going to fork most of the bills. So, yeah, but how yeah, much is not much? Twenty thousand. No, it's only like uh, I think ten left. The parents left her money to pay for the. the... Maybe the parents ought to buy her a house. <laughs> they own a house. They want her to move in it, but yeah. Perfect. Let her move into it and find out how much it costs to operate a house. Um, it's nothing. They own it. All she's got to do is to pay the property tax. That's All she's got to do, she's just getting out of college. What does she do for a living? She's going to join the uh, some construction company as Wait a an engineer. But right now she has no job. She's an intern at an engineering company right now. And what does that pay? Whatever interns get, very minimal. Practically nothing. Something like that. And that means she'd like to live with you. I think that's the idea, yeah. Yeah, because she can't afford to pay for her own place. You know how much it costs to own a house, property taxes, insurance, maintenance, the cost of uh, energy... <laughs> I don't know how big your place is or the house that her parents want to move in is, but uh, what are your utility bills looking like these days? A couple hundred. Huh. Well, you think she can afford all that? She can. They're starting her out at a pretty decent rate. How much is that? 65 for a college grad. That's not too bad starting out for her first year. So. Uh-huh. And uh, where does she work? Where, like, now? Physically, where is it? San Diego. Wait a minute. Does she live near you? No, we commute back and forth. Where does she live, San Diego? I'm sorry? She, so she lives in San Diego? Yeah. So if she lived with you, she'd have to commute from Rancho Cucamonga or Upland or somewhere like that to San Diego? No, The once she graduates, she's dropping the intern and going to a company that's already uh, hired her on. Where is that? Uh, in L.A. area. L.A. Only a two and a half hour commute each way every day. Add some traffic on that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm including the traffic. Two and a half hours each way every day. I know exactly where you are. Yeah. And so uh, she's going to pay for the gas. And at the rate of uh, speed she'll be driving and the distance, she'll need another tank of gas about every two days. And a tank of gas these days is about 75, 80 bucks. You think she can afford all that? I think so. That and paying off her student loan and property taxes and insurance? Well, the student loan is not existing. That's going to be wiped out the minute she graduates. Well, we will see if that happens. Bottom line here is that if she's got all his money, then she should accept the house from her parents. Logistics on. <laughs> Forget about if you can't find a vagina in the nine oh nine area code, what's your problem? No, the logistics problem is the house of her parents is up north in like San Francisco area. Uh huh. That's a logistics problem. All right, so then she should get her own place uh, and, and pay for it. Yeah, that sounds like the best plan. It's not your problem. It's not your problem. Do you disagree? I agree with you, Amanda. I've been listening to you and your uh, your ideas. And they're, they're starting to sink in. Yeah. Joe, I'm telling you, right now, because the sex is good, you can't see how it's going to end. You are so jaded.
Yeah, and why am I jaded? Your poor divorces. And my experience. True. Yeah. I'm trying to learn from them. So. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, you need to be a little more jaded. Just imagine later on when you tell her, you know, you really ought to move to the, you really ought to move out. But my house is up in the Bay Area, and I don't want to go to the Bay Area. My job is in L.A., and I live here, and I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Absolutely. That's your future, Joe. Make her figure it out now. Don't, if she moves in with you, she'll blow off the Bay Area opportunity, and then she'll have nowhere else to go. All right. Thanks for your advice, Tom. I'm here to help, Joe. Sound like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A fat girl's kind of like a scooter, okay? It, it, they're fun to drive until somebody catches you. It's the Tom Likas Show. Doing okay. That's great. You provide a good service there, boss. Hey, I just wanted to say that uh, percentage-wise, Paul McCartney got off cheap. And he got one thirty-third of his net worth. Oh no, no, no! It's one thirty-third of what she claimed his net worth was, not what it is. Right. Well, I'm sure he's hiding stuff in offshore accounts and all that good. I uh, know the uh, the judge uh, in the case said it point blank that uh, what she was claiming was just not true. Well, I'm sure a lot of guys in Southern California would love to be get get, get off with a thirty third of what uh, they cl their wife claimed they he had. It's it's just a travesty. Well, yeah, no doubt he had a good attorney, and he could have been taken for a lot more. But uh, bottom line here is that uh, Paul McCartney never should have gotten married. If he had to get married, he should have had a prenup. Absolutely. And uh, $47.8 million is excessive. I don't care how little you think it is. No, I, I agree. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm very frugal. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bean counter by nature, and, and I, I don't, I don't agree that she should have gotten that much money. But percentage wise, he, he got off cheap. But I mean, you know, relatively speaking, it's not bad. But you know, it, it would definitely piss me off if I had to give some piece of ass uh, uh, that much money. It's just, it's disgusting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, and she's. Just, just, in my opinion, just, she's disgusting. Can't can you just get groupies that still like the Beatles? I mean, come on. There's got to be some thirty somethings that like the Beatles. You know, or, huh? or maybe even some eighteen somethings. Well, some, you know, when you're Paul, what are you gonna? When you're, wait a minute. When you're Paul McCartney, what are you gonna do? Put an ad on Match. dot com? I mean, come on. No, just call the granddaughters of the the, the original groupies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. I like that. Holly on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. I'm just going to comment on the guy who was talking about SWAT and the whole, the women going into SWAT. And that is the worst idea ever. I mean, come on. This is, my dad is one of the original elite LAPD SWAT guys. I mean, SLA shootout, Patty Hurst, that whole thing. I mean, these guys are the last of the, the most, the top of the line. I mean, you, you can't put women in there. It just doesn't work. They're irrational. They don't think well. There's, they have to make split-second decisions. Well, uh, the chief of police in L.A., uh, Bill Bratton, he's the one now saying that he's going to do whatever he has to do to get women on the SWAT team. Well, I mean, I, is, his, is his wife making him hold her purse for him now or something in the malls? I don't get it. Why is – that's like not – I think – you know, I understand if you're in Boston, it's a matriarchal city. Uh, the, the women there are a bunch of ball-busting bitches. And I can understand why, if you were in Boston, you might think this was necessary to do. But L.A. is not Boston. Yeah. It's not. It's not well, New York. It's not Boston. And, you know, I mean, these guys are trained rigorously. This is a select few. There's no, not really any politics in SWAT. We, we can't start doing that now. I mean, I would be scared if a girl SWAT member came to rescue me in some dire situation. I, I really would. I would think, Jesus Christ, can you go get me somebody who can really save my life? 
because it's just it's totally irrational. Good point, Holly. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Brian on the Tom Like His Show wide open telephones. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How you doing, sir? Great. Good. I was calling to get your opinion on the uh, Bill Richardson endorsement of Barack Obama. How do you feel about that? Well, it won't hurt. Right. Uh, I, I, it won't hurt. Uh, I've always said about Bill Richardson, uh, what he says has very little impact because New Mexico is a sparsely populated state. And honestly speaking, uh, his new goatee aside or whatever it is, I don't think many people know that he's Hispanic. <laughs> Did, do you see that affecting the uh, relationship between Latinos and African Americans at all? Not really, because I do believe, because his name is Bill Richardson, just like Martin Sheen, a lot of people don't know he's Hispanic. Right. Right. I'm curious to see how it all plays out. Um, well, I'm curious to see. I, I think it's going to have a minimal impact. Uh, the announcement was made on Good Friday when nobody's watching CNN, nobody's watching television. Um, right. You know, <laughs> I happen to see it just because the stock market was closed today, and so I switched over from CNBC to CNN, and that was what was on. Okay. All right, good enough, Tom. I was going to see if you could take me out Drew Peterson style. Drew Peterson style? Yeah, that would be a shotgun and a splash. <laughs> Wouldn't that be tasteless, Tom? That would be tasteless. Yes, it would. There you go. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ed... On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Hey, um, yesterday in reference to the text messaging issue, you mentioned that uh, you forwarded your home phone to your cell phone. Now, which number do you use to call these bitches back, or do you, like, block your number? No, here's what I did. Oh, I blocked my number for one thing. It's always blocked. If they don't want to answer, that's fine with me. Great. And then uh, when I um, give them a phone number, it's a secondary number I have at home that is forwarded to my cell phone. All right. So if they attempt to voluntarily start texting me, there's no texts because <laughs> there's no t there's no there's no cell phone. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's all you have to do. All right, well, keep up the good work. I've been listening for about a year, and take me out porno style. Here you go, Ed. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Spencer on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Spencer. Dad. Son. How you been? Been a doing, long time. Since doing, spoke doing great. Hey, I want to touch base on this uh, deadbeat dad issue. Yeah. I've got a way to resolve it. Maybe make it go away permanently. Okay. Um, when you're at the hospital having your little baby that you want. I think all baby boys, since you're down there with a a knife chopping away at their junk, maybe uh, do a little, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, snip, snip. Oh, yeah, a little circumcision. Yeah, circumcision, and maybe give them like a, a one-time free reversal. <laughs> so when, when they are ready to actually have a kid they want, go to the hospital, get a reverse, and have your kid. Well, you're talking about a vasectomy. Or a vasectomy, sorry. All baby boys. All baby boys get a vasectomy? I, that's not even, I don't think, possible uh, because of the biology of the thing. Uh, baby boys' uh, testicles have not descended. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying is research it, maybe find out if it's yeah. even a possible thing. I'm not a doctor, but I think that's too early to do that. But who knows? I'm glad you're thinking. Our, our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.